Welcome back. This is part two of our video on the Cable Modeling Toolkit in ANSYS 2D Extractor. Part one of the video showed how to use the toolkit to create a cable cross-section drawing and how to parameterize it so that we could model different possible arrangements of the conductors. In this part, we'll look at the different arrangements that were generated. We'll also see what effect the variation in wire positions had on the inductive coupling between the signal conductors. This will give us some insight into what the best and worst case coupling between those signals can be. To start off, let's pick two of the signal lines. I'll choose wire 1 and wire 2, and look at the inductive coupling between them. We'll create a new report and select the inductance, or L matrix. Then we choose one entry of the matrix to plot. We'll choose the independent variable for the plot to be the seed val variable that we defined for parametric analysis in part one of the video. When we look at the plot of this mutual inductance versus the seed val parameter, we see that it rises and falls quite significantly as we go from one variation to the next. The low value is about 80 nanohenries per meter, and you can see that occurs when the parameter value is 6. The high value is about 350 nanohenries per meter, and that occurs for a parameter value of 2. So we have a variation of over four times from the minimum to the maximum. To see why this happens, we can go back and compare the cable geometries that were generated for these different parameter values. To do this, we go to the View menu and set up an animation. We'll select the seed val parameter and tell it to step through the available values. Now the animation starts and shows us all of the different cross-section geometries that the software created. We can see the conductors moving around from one variation to the next. If it's going too fast or too slow for your tastes, then you can drag the slider bar to adjust the speed. While this animation gives us a good idea of what's going on, it would also be nice to pause and see which variations of the geometry correspond to the high and low coupling values. We can do that. For this example, we're looking at the coupling between wire 1 and wire 2. We'll select them in the drawing so that we can see them better. Then we'll go to the optometric section of the project tree and use the view analysis result option to select specific variations of the parameter value. You'll recall that we hit the maximum coupling when the parameter value was 2, so we'll choose that first. The display is updated to show us the geometry for that variation. You can see now that wire 1 and wire 2 are close to one another in this variation, and they're also far away from the big ground return conductor. That means that we have two large signal-to-ground current loops that are tightly coupled together, and so we have a high mutual inductance between them. The minimum coupling occurred when the parameter value was 6, so we'll look at that next. Now we can see that wire 1 and wire 2 are about as far apart as they could possibly be, and they're on opposite sides of the big ground conductor. Because of this, there will be very little interaction between their current loops, and so the mutual inductance should be quite low. Of course, this is exactly what the electromagnetic simulation predicted. We've seen here how the parametric capability of ANSYS 2D Extractor can be combined with its cable modeling toolkit to study the variations in the mutual inductance that might occur when the cable is actually manufactured. This tells us what we can expect the best and worst case coupling between the signal lines to be. As you can imagine, there are many 